In the last unit, you learned the lo location of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids on the periodic table. And I want you to look at this table now. We're going to review that, and we're going to look at the properties of each one of those types of elements. So as you can see, all of these red elements over here on the left side of that zigzag staircase are the metals. The nonmetals are these yellow elements to the right of the zigzag staircase, and then those metalloids or semi-metals are the ones that are along that stair step, the staircase that divides them. Okay? So let's look at the properties of each one. Okay, the properties of metals um, are here. Think of some metals that you know, like aluminum or iron or copper. They're really good conductors of heat and electricity. That's why we make wires out of them, and that's why we put them in uh, the, on our pots and pans in the kitchen. Most metals are solids at room temperature. Now, one of the exceptions to that is mercury. Mercury, you probably know, is a liquid at room temperature. Metals are malleable, which means that you can flatten them into sheets, kind of like aluminum foil. Metals are also ductile. You can stretch them and shape them into wires. Metals have high tensile strength. This means that it takes a lot of effort to break them or to tear them. And finally, metals have luster or shine. Now, all of these properties are a result of that delocalized electron model, or the sea of electron model, which tells us that the electrons in metal atoms don't belong to any one particular atom. Let's look at the nonmetals next. Nonmetals are really the opposite of metals. They're not good conductors of heat and electricity. In fact, most of them are gases at room temperature. Think about these examples, oxygen and chlorine. Those are definitely gases. One example of a nonmetal that is not a gas at room temperature is bromine. Um, it's actually a liquid. Metals are brittle, which means that they crumble. They're, they're not malleable or ductile like the metals are. And they don't have luster to them because they're generally gases. So then that leaves us with the metalloids. Metalloids are really in between, just like they're located on the periodic table. They have some properties that are similar to metals, some that are similar to nonmetals. Metals are conductors, nonmetals are nonconductors, so metalloids are semiconductors. You've heard that term because it's used a lot in computers and electronic gadgets that we have in our everyday lives. Now, most metalloids are solids at room temperature, so they're a little bit malleable, but not as malleable as the metals are. They're a little bit brittle, but not as brittle as the nonmetals. And they have some luster or shine to them, but not as much as the metals. So that's the comparison of the three. What we're going to do in this unit is to bond these different types of elements together and make some new compounds that have their own properties separate from the elements that they're formed from. Thanks, and have a good one.